In this tutorial, we're going to look at using a simple function block to square a number. The function blocks can be found at the bottom of the new project window, and by right clicking and selecting insert new function block, you have a choice between ladder or structured text. In this example, we're going to go with a ladder logic function block. So I need to select a function block name, SQU for square, and my author can be user, and revision one. I'll go through this in a lot more detail within the long tutorial, but this is just a quick tutorial to get started. So that's my simple function block created. To get into the function block editor, I just double click and CX Programmer opens up this screen. You have five different tabs to select the different types of variables you might want to use. Internal variables, input variables, output variables, in, out and external. For this particular tutorial, we only need two types of variables, input and output. So for the input variable, I'm going to select insert new variable, and I'm going to select a data type of dint. And I've called this number to square. And it's a dint, and its usage is going to be input with an initial value of zero. I'm going to add one more as an output, and I'll just call this result. Again, this is a dint, but this time the usage is output and its initial value is zero. With that done, let's add the actual function we want to use. The first thing we need to do is add a contactor, and the contactor that we're going to use is the en. So we have two different default variables here. We have en, or the enable pin, which will enable the function block to run, and we have a second one called eno which is the output enable pin that tells you the function block has run successfully. This will be automatically set to 1 when the function block runs. You need to manually set it to 0 or set it down if you've detected an error during the function block running. So we're going to add a new instruction and this is the multiplication. So we'll put a star in with a space and then the number that we want to multiply which is the number to square space by the second number we want to multiply it by which is again number to square, a space, and then the result are the word that we want to occupy with the result of multiplying these two values. And I've actually called that result. If you're unsure how to use numeric operators, I've done a separate video on this, you'll find on the channel. So go enter, and that's it. So now let's use this particular function block within a section. So first of all, I've created three variables input number, result from function block, and one called HMI Go. This is just the button that I'm going to use on the HMI to test it with. It's important to remember that these particular variables have no link to these ones here within the function block. This is just a prototype of a function. This will be the actual implementation of it here. So you can use this function multiple times within this section or any section. And over time, as you program more and more, you'll build up your own bank of function blocks that you can use again and again and again. So let's actually use it within a section. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a contactor for the HMI button. And to add the function block itself, I'll go up to the top to the panel and beside the new PLC and beside the new PLC instruction, which is what we use to insert the numeric functions, there's another icon for insert new function block. So I'm going to select that, drag it down and click. So I get asked now to select a function block instance. So this is the instance that you want to create of this particular definition. We've only got one definition here, which is the function block I just created. And I'm going to use this particular function block as part of my calculator. So I'll call it square number for calculator. With that done, the function block is now available for me within my rung. So you can see here, I have two variables, my input and my output variable. A mistake that a lot of students make, particularly when it involves Boolean inputs, is they select a contactor, drop the contactor on, and they see that it creates a link, or what looks like a link here, between the function block and the contactor. This is not correct, and you'll see I get a, a red line along here, and it won't work. The correct method is to select the input or output within the function block, 
use the arrow keys to move to the left or right and select enter. You are then asked to insert a new parameter. So from the drop down list, I'm going to select input number. You can see now that the input number parameter is now assigned to that particular input. For the output, I'll do the same, select the output I want, take one step to the right in this case, select enter and select the output. And I'm done, my function block is now completed and I've got no red lines here to say there's an error on the rung. I may wish to use the ENO to detect errors within my particular function block and that may in fact be an input to a secondary function block or it may illuminate a warning lamp or some other variable. So let's test this code using CX Designer. Within CX Designer, I've used the standard template for the NS5 TQ1 V2, which is the terminal type or the HMI that we have in the lab. And I've added two numeric inputs and I've added two labels, one called value and one called total. And I've added a simple push button. I've also gone to the symbol table and I've copied in the three variables, my input number, my result from function block and my HMI button. If I double click on the numeric input, I'll just check I have it set up right and I have, it's a D int for the storage type and I've selected the correct address. And the same for this one, D int and the address I've selected is result from function block. So let's test this by selecting tools from the menu, test, I'll save my changes and I'm going to connect to CX simulator. Now that the simulation is opened up, I'm going to select a value of 5, press enter and press the button and the answer of that is 25. So the square of 5 is 25. So my function block seems to work. So we can actually debug our function block by simply selecting our input here and selecting from the debug menu F11. I'm going to right click and I'm going to set that on and then I'm going to use the F11 button to step through. So now it's selected my function block and now it goes into my particular code that's part of that function block and you can see here that it says multiply this number which is set to 5 by 5 and the result is 0. So I'm going to press F11 again and you can see now that the result of that was 25. Let's press F11 again and it should go to the next available rung which is in fact at the end and we should now go back to the start to the first rung. This is a very simple program. There is only really one rung that we created which is this rung 0 of the section 1 because the end function is put in by default. So that completes this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. There is a more in-depth tutorial on using function box to follow, but this should be enough to answer the questions.